This is my second out the Zwift video. This is my second attempt to get to the top of it in a reasonable time. So yesterday I went for a long training run, over four hours of non-stop running. So today I've decided to give my feet a break and destroy my legs on Zwift instead. I'm currently addicted to Zwift. And for the sake of my running, I really hope this addiction calms down soon. Two weeks ago, I climbed out to Zwift for the first time ever. One corner left and then the finish line. I can see where I think the finish line is, where the big legs are. Oh my God, I'm nearly two hours into this cycle. Yes! A hundred and seven minutes. Next time, I'll attempt to do it in under an hour and a half. So, in this video, I attempt out the Zwift again for the second time. I'm in the garage again. I'm about to get on the Zwift bike. Long story short, I was gonna try and do a different challenge today. I'm not gonna go into the detail because I'm still gonna do it, but due to things out of my control, it means I can't, basically I can't access the route yet. I don't know why I'm being coy here. I wanted to cycle up the new Ven Top route, but for the life of me, I couldn't find the map on Zwift and gave up trying to hack the system, as Zwift Insider calls it, and decided to do my second out to Zwift attempt that I'd been wanting to do for the past two weeks. I've chosen the route which is the tour of fire and ice because it gives me a better lead in and it also allows me to warm up my legs before I hit the bottom of the mountain um, and I'm going to go for sub 90 minutes. Now I will caveat that I do set myself a very challenging target at the start of this video of sub 90 minutes. This is very typical of me. So I'm going to do this in less than an hour and a half. You can even see a moment of realization that as I said, sub 90 minutes, I don't think I even believed it myself. Yeah, let's do this. And I want to get up this computer game mountain in less than a hundred minutes. I didn't put sub 90 minutes on the thumbnail of this video as I can't be that clickbaity, but I do try at the start to push for sub 90 minutes. Feel free to offer advice or mockery in the comments. You see to climb the Alp in anything close to 90 minutes, or an hour and a half, I will have to push at least 2.06 watts per kg for the whole climb. But on hindsight, this did not take into consideration my heavier weight than the average Zwifter. According to Zwift Power, the population average for the climb is one hour and five minutes, and the average weight is 74.7 kilograms. When prepping for this climb, I had planned to attempt to stick to the 2.2 watts per kg. This gave me a small amount of room for error, or for being knackered. Because I currently weigh 111.1 kilograms, which is really heavy, what I forgot to consider was my really heavy weight disadvantage of 36.4 kg above Zwift Power's population average for the projected watts per kg needed for the times on these graphs. According to Zwift Insider, for every kg of additional body weight, I will be 45 seconds slower up the climb. Basically, 2.2 watts per kg isn't gonna cut it for sub 90 minutes. But before I started the challenge, I didn't know that. I only realized that during it. But who allows stats and science to get in the way of a good old pipe dream? Let's get going. The build up to the bottom of the mountain isn't really important. I just want to get there with a good warm up, get my legs warmed up so then I can hit it. So I've got a few tactics that I'm going to employ. So the first tactic is obviously keep an eye on the corner markers for my last attempt. I knew that the HUD provided uh -huh. me with my previous corner yeah. PR times. What I didn't realize was that the PR times were hard to concentrate on when you're mid attempt. I'm gonna try and do a negative split. So I'm gonna push harder the second half. This is absolute nonsense. A negative split is sound advice. Pushing the second half of the climb harder than your first half and calculating your watts per kg in advance for this to work is sensible. However, I did not do this. And when you see how hard I hit this at the start, it is evident that this tactic goes out the window very, very soon. But I wanna make sure that I go into this with a lot more energy 
than I did the last time. I got caught off guard, I wasn't sure what I was doing. I didn't even know it was the beginning of the mountain until shortly afterwards. I got sidetracked by a flipping pacer, pacer ghost. Oh man, I really didn't want to put myself under pressure to try and get a good time. Why is Wiff giving me a pacer? Is that the same ghost pacer that was at the bottom of the hill? It's a distraction. Yeah, it is. I went for a really long run yesterday. Um, and it was a really hot day and I didn't take enough water with me. So I'm suffering massively today. I need to keep my training going because I've only got a few more couple of weeks until I do a big ultra. So I need to keep the training going. I just thought, sod it, I'm gonna go up the Alp because I really enjoyed it last time. It was a great workout, really good cardio, but I'm just gonna keep going and then I'll come back to you at the bottom of the, of the climb. start of Alpe Zwift, or well, it started the route at least. Okay, are we ready? Let's do this. So you can see how uh, slow I started this course off. I'm already ahead of my ghost. I want to try and average about 2.2 watts per kilogram. There's a second ghost that's appeared behind me. So I've got my one behind me of my first attempt. And then I have a second ghost of another Zwifter that's done it. And he did it in, or she, did it in 95 minutes, just over. Okay. Corner 21. Jesus. All right, just 21 more corners to go. I was exceeding the 2.2 watts average I planned to stick with and had hit corner 21 averaging 230 watts and corner 20 averaging 228 watts. I've managed to get myself a six second gap from the 95 minute pacer. Okay, corner 20. I knew when I climbed the Alp two weeks ago, I didn't leave everything I had on that pixelated hellish incline. I was knackered at the end, but I felt like I could have thrown more at the climb, especially at the start. Corner 19. This is the third corner. And we're already over a minute ahead of schedule. And pushing these early corners doesn't end at the first two corners. I kept doing this until we couldn't push anymore and that's when the wheel started to fall off. Average on 19, 240 watts. As you can see from the corner stats on the left of the screen, it wasn't clear to me how far ahead I was hitting these corners. This was supposed to be a negative split, so if that's the case, it's gonna be interesting to see what I do. Yes, I agree, Ryan. How will you turn a strong push like this into a negative split? Spoiler, I don't. I'm gonna push from 18 to 17 with the feather. Okay, let's go. I pushed these first few corners far too hard. I knew I was ahead of the previous time as I was already significantly ahead of my previous attempt. Zwift had also provided me with a 95 minute attempt ghost as a pacer. The jury is still out as to if I think this helped me. This increase doesn't seem like a lot, but further up the climb, you will see that it does make a huge difference. Corner 17. That corner 17, 237 watts average. I'm getting stronger. Okay, my other video, this bridge was where I caught my pacer for the 107 or the 111 minute pace. 
corner 15, 2%. We've just blasted through the pacer. Okay, I, I did get 21 seconds ahead of the 95 minute pacer. But now I, I've dropped it to 17. We're at corner 15. 23 seconds ahead now. Thank God. I should have been sticking to 220 watts. Will you uh, put it on the table in front of me? That's it, yeah. And an angle. Good girl. You turn that one off. That's it. Thank you. Scarly. And this is a simple action if you're watching this video as inspiration for your first climb up, up the Alp. Okay, I'm not happy. I had a drama with the camera to get my daughter to help me. But I've lost 10 seconds on my pace. The 95 minute pacer is 10 seconds closer to me now. Don't mess about with cameras. They're detrimental to your concentration. Really annoyed by that. Really annoyed. This was the point in the climb where I realized I was starting to fall apart. The lactic acid buildup in my legs was intense and I knew holding an average of 220 consistently was getting really hard. My legs are going. What also didn't help was that I was surging. I was standing up in the saddle, increasing the gear and dropping my RPM in the vain hope of forcing my heavy weight up the mountain. I'm surging too much. I'm surging. I need to maintain the 2.2 watts a kilogram and not surge. You see, in reality, for every gain I made in the surge, I lost in recovery. And then here, when I focus my mind on my watt per kg indicator on the bottom right of the HUD, I actually do a really good job of simply maintaining that pace. It worked so well that then corner 11 came and it was a respectable 220 watt average. But then typically me, I worry I'm not pushing and I take my mind off the game plan and push some more. Again, surging. Corner number nine. Oh my God. At this point in the climb, I could see that the consistent two plus watts per kg approach of the 95 minute ghost was slowly but surely catching me like some Stephen King horror show. I don't think I'm gonna do 90 minutes. I'm way off. No shit, Sherlock. My average pace was again dropping, and even though corner 11 was a solid 220 watts, corner 10 was 215, and corner nine was down to 207 watts. I was rapidly losing power in my legs. Sub 95 minutes was a target that was still achievable, and all I had to do was maintain that 2.2 watts per kg for the rest of the climb, and I would have made it. My legs are hurting. I'm struggling to maintain 2.2. I'm keeping ahead of my pace as my original time I'm gonna beat, unless something goes wrong now. But I'm only 15 seconds ahead of 95 minutes. I'm just gonna to get to the top. That's all I'm gonna do, just get to the top. My calf muscle's hurting as well. Just get to the top, Ryan. Right, corner eight. Okay, so new plan. We're going for sub 95. Because I'm not going to get the 90. The last corner dropped below 200 watts. Really bad. Corner seven.
Corner 7 then came in at 207 watts. And even though that was up on the previous corner, it still wasn't enough. And I knew it. I'm still dreaming about 2.2 watts per kg even now. 2.2 watts per kg. All right, let's just stick, let's just stick to the 2.2. Come on. So I then smash an energy gel in the hopes it will give me the Lance Armstrong boost I desperately need. All right. I've been caught. I've been caught by the 95 minute pacer. Oh man, that's really annoying. I was 20 odd seconds ahead. I'm shaking. I'm starting to feel really dizzy and my hands and legs are starting to shake. This is just exhaustion. Here he is. This was a psychological blow. I could have very easily have quit here. I mean, I don't quit because I don't quit, but I was ready to throw my toys out the pram. I'd worked really hard to get ahead of it and now I wasn't. I managed to stay with the ghost for the next kilometre, but then it slowly poodled away from me like that scene in Austin Powers. I took a salt tablet as I was starting to worry that my fatigue was being exacerbated by the lack of electrolytes. I was really starting to feel really shaky. That's corner six. I've been dropped by the pacer. The lactic acid build up in my legs. Man. Boy, oh boy. I got this wrong. I got the pacing completely wrong. Too many surges. I went too hard at the beginning. Got this completely wrong. Five, corner five. I'm done. I am done. I've got nothing. I've got nothing. My laptop then suddenly stopped recording, froze and shut down. I was convinced I'd lost all of my Zwift recordings of my Alp attempt. Then my Watt bike decided to disconnect from Zwift and ramp me up into the 20 second gear where I could barely move my legs. All I needed was a small fire to break out in the corner of my garage and I would have had the trifecta. At this point, everything was conspiring against me and the wheels were really and truly starting to fall off. My legs didn't belong to me and I felt like I was about to pass out and hit the floor any second. I'm not exaggerating this for dramatic effect. I genuinely felt this rough. I then have to call for help from my daughter because all hell's breaking loose. Why are you so slow? Why? Because I'm going up a massive mountain. Look at the hill. It's going down. Look at the percentage. 2.4 kilometers, about 20 minutes. Good. And he's rather shout for us. That's so bad. And this faffing around with my laptop and cameras was a right pain in the ass. And I could stand here now and say that this was the reason I missed the 95 or even the 90 mark. But if I'm honest, it really wasn't. I fixed all this with the help of my reluctant daughters and then cracked on. All right, I'm not recording on the screen uh, as the uh, laptop memory is full. So I can't record, but that's corner two. I've got two corners left. I'm dying. I am one minute, 15 seconds ahead of my first attempt. And I'm one minute, one second behind the 95 minute pacer. My ass is on fire. My legs have nothing, nothing. They don't belong to me.
wanted to get it under 100, but I didn't have it. I didn't do it, Scarly. And then that's it. I reached the top of the Alp. I managed to climb Alp de Zwift for the second time in just over 100 minutes. I'm a little annoyed that I didn't get it below 100 minutes. I do blame this on the technical hiccups. I can't be too annoyed as it is seven minutes faster than my first attempt two weeks ago. And my next attempt will definitely be below 90 minutes. So in conclusion, things that I'll do differently next time. The first thing I'll do, and this is a really simple one, will be to write down the timings for each corner. Next time I won't burst as much. There's something energetic and exciting about getting up and out of the saddle to push the watts per kg, but then I have to recover. And knowing that a steady, more consistent pace is better overall. And if I'd simply maintain that 2.2 watts per kg consistent pace, rather than fight to get away early, then I may, and I emphasize may, have got a lot closer to the 90 minute goal target I initially set myself. Next time I attempt this climb, I'll make sure I have plenty of rest beforehand and not do it the day after running a marathon distance. So I just wanna say thank you for watching this second attempt. I really appreciate your support. Any comments or advice, tips, they genuinely do help. You'll be surprised how many of my tips that I've received on previous videos I've used for my races and for my training. Thanks very much. See you in the next video. Hit it. No. Never did it right.